So mm -hmm. the discussion today at the GIDC updates in Bendigo was all about the yield gap. And the yield gap is identified as the potential yield and the actual yield that farmers are achieving. So CSIRO had done some work a few years ago and they identified that the yield gap was approximately 50% across the Australian grains industry. It's important that we close the yield gap because it is lost production. We're wasting water and we're not growing crop and farmers are losing money by not optimising their production. So this GADC funded project has been running since 2015 to 2018. We're working in Western Australia, the southern region and the northern region with all the major crops. We have identified what the major factors were that are contributing to that yield loss. The major limiting factors we identified were the abiotic and biotic stresses that are occurring on the crop. So nitrogen was the first limiting factor and in many seasons nitrogen was limited the production of the crop. So the crops could not reach their potential yield because there was insufficient nitrogen available to it. Now some growers were able to minimise that effect by their rotation, so having brown manure crops in the rotation rather than continuous cropping. And other farmers tried to minimise that gap or reduce the yield gap by applying nitrogen. And there's always risk associated with applying nitrogen in crop because you never know whether you're going to get sufficient rainfall to, make, to apply that actual nitrogen, make it available to the crop and increase your crop yield. The other limiting factors, especially in some areas in, in South Australia, but also in Victoria, and also definitely in Western Australia was frost. And frost had a big effect on potential crop yield. It's gonna be much harder for farmers to manage frost, but we all appreciate that frost levels have been increasing over the last 10 or 15 years and the risk that farmers are under with their crops from frost is, is significant. Heat shock was another major contributor. And then the final yield gap, or the contributors to the yield gap, were the, the root diseases as well as weeds. And a lot of farmers are very successful in managing weeds, but reasonably high levels of ryegrass and brown grass and some of the broadleaf weeds also contributed to that yield gap analysis. The really good part of the project is that there are farmers who are averaging about 15 to 20 percent yield gap, which is probably the upper limit that they're going to achieve. And for those farmers that are, haven't quite reached that level of, of yield gap yet, is that we have now got solutions to, well solutions or at least very good ideas of what the yield gap is and what can be done to actually close the remaining gap that exists on farms. You have to address the whole farming system. You can't just address one single issue to try and reduce the yield gap. It is a, a systems approach and understanding what the major limiting factors are for each individual paddock on the farm is going to be the solution to the problem. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.